Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now we're going to be talking about family business practice. Mm, but not the sale of vultures. Certainly not the sale of vultures. <laughs> 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 because it might be a family business, you know. Yeah, it could be, but it's a legal business. It's a legal so business. So you don't want to do yeah. any don't legal want to business. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> so 90% of Nigeria's GDP is generated by the private sector and 90% of indigenous companies are family businesses. So, it is clear that family businesses are the engine of our economy. Unfortunately, we haven't done great in terms of sustainability and succession. Only 2% of Nigerian businesses pass on successfully to the second generation when the founders die, compared to a global trend of 33%. Clearly, we have an issue at hand that needs to be cracked to ensure sustainability of our economic growth. Now, what does all this mean? Olanike Anani is going to put it all in perspective for us, and she is a family business practice expert. Good morning, Nike, and thank you for joining Good us. Good morning, Ms. Valera. Thank you for having me. Good. So, um, you actually have a practice that deals in family business and succession. Yes. Tell us about that. Okay. So, um, my name is Nikia Anani, and I'm a family business expert. I run a practice called Nikia Anani Practice Limited. Um, it's a family business practice. Essentially, I assist African family business founders in ensuring that um, we create what I term resilient family enterprises. These are multi-generational legacy businesses that will be sustainable sources of wealth to families, businesses, and communities. Long sentence, in short, to be. <laughs> in what short, multi-generational wealth and multi-generational businesses. Why did you decide to go into this? Well, um, so since my teens, I've been very passionate about economic development for Africa. Um, this passion was birthed while studying economics at A-level. I then went on to study economics at university. I graduated from University College London. And in my naivety during that period, I thought the only way I would make an impact in this space was through policy. So my aspiration was to join developmental finance institutions like IFC, World Bank, UN, you know, and the likes. Um, but unfortunately, I met a lot of closed doors and I wasn't able to get into those organizations. And so I decided to park that passion and pursue a more mainstream, traditional career. <laughs> and I joined Deloitte. Um, I worked in their corporate tax international department for a few years, where I qualified as a chartered accountant. So I relocated to Nigeria in 2011. And when I came here, it then became very clear to me that, yes, policy has a role to play in development, but actually, private sector and entrepreneurship is very important equally. Like you said, 90% of our GDP is private sector-led. 90% of indigenous businesses are family businesses. Only 2% move from generation one to generation two, mm -hmm. compared to 33% globally. And so it began, I began thinking that if we can improve the sustainability of our family businesses, it will go a long way in propelling our economy and solidifying our growth. Okay, you know, I... All the grammar. Grammar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you, you, you gave a very long sentence and I didn't put it in two words. Yes. Sustainable wealth yes. and generational wealth. Okay, but... I, I was just thinking, mm -hmm. um, I used to live somewhere, there's this woman that lived opposite my house. I used to sell bread, ewagoi, bread and beans, and you know ewagoi. Mm -hmm. But she has a, a daughter who schooled in the University of Lagos. So every evening, that young lady comes back to sit with her mother and sell ewagoi to whoever wants to buy. Mm. So when you're talking now generational and sustainable, I'm wondering, does that young lady know that she can continue that business and cause it to thrive? Now, in 2011, you came in here. You started thinking that policy is good, but there has to be the practical side of it. Mm -hmm. How has that been in terms of acceptability? Mm. So I recently just started the practice, literally two months ago. Mm -hmm. um, so it's still very early days. But certainly, there's an appetite that everybody knows someone who 
the father or the founder of a business passed away, and months after the business passed, um, months after the founder passed away, the business collapses. And I think it's about time that we wake up and start to see that there's a way we can do these things differently. To the Ewagoin, Ewagoin Stella's daughter. I mean, I think the Ewagoin, the founder needs to have clarity on what she wants. And so does the next generation. What does she want? And it may not necessarily be that her daughter has to carry this Ewagoin business on. Mm. But it's important that the daughter understands what the business is about because we can... What is the vision? How large do we want this Ewagoin business to be, right? And if it's a massive vision, it's, un it's unlikely that it's only going to be dependent on the mom. Mm -hmm. And at some point, if we're moving into generation two, she might not be the person selling, but she will need to understand what the business is about to provide adequate oversight over whomever is managing the business. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to start thinking very clearly as African business founders, what do we want from our businesses? Are we aiming for sustainability? If we are, there are certain things we need to start putting in order now and start thinking about. And having these conversations with the next generation, with your children, with your grandchildren, it's important. You think okay. that they're not having that conversation. Maybe sometimes they leave the, the next generation out, um, maybe to educate them. But do you think bringing them in would help in like an apprenticeship? Mm. Would that help them? Um, it could come in, there are many ways to skin a cat, as the British say. Um, it could come in many forms, right? An apprenticeship is a good opportunity. It's hands-on. The children can go into the business and understand the flavor of what it's actually about in practical terms. Um, but I believe the first step is the founders actually just being open with their spouses and their children. This is the vision. This is the mission. These are objectives. This is where we're heading. These are our values. Are you interested in coming along in terms of, do you want to take up a managerial position in this business? And if the child is like, yes, great, then we can start thinking of a developmental plan because there's passion, but then there's competence. Mm -hmm. So we need to develop you and groom you to make sure that you're actually adequately equipped to take on such a role. So we start to think about what education do you need? What training do you need? What work experiences do you need? Do you need to be shadowing in the business, you know, through an apprenticeship and the likes? We come up with a plan. But if it's in the instance I like, mommy, daddy, I'm not interested. I want to go to Canada. I want to. <laughs> I'm not interested in this business. Fine, but you still need to understand what this business is about because in the future, assuming sustainable, multi-generational businesses, you'll be an owner of the business. And as a responsible owner, you need to understand what the business is about to provide adequate oversight. Okay, let me, let, let me put it, uh, same question about um, leadership and handing over to the next generation, but let's, let's put it this way. Mm -hmm. um, in your view, what would you say is the role of leadership in that transition to the next generation and the sustainability of the business? Okay, so um, I have a framework which I challenge the founders to aspire for abundant wealth. I think it's very important, firstly, we know where we're going. Um, I say running a business is like playing football. You know, the objective of football is to score a goal. Similarly, in our business, build wealth, right? And in order to build wealth, there are certain things we need to put in place. And I challenge founders to aspire for abundant wealth, wealth that will last for a minimum of three generations. Um, and to do that, one has to build your business and a wealth portfolio. But you need effective leadership. You can't micromanage. You can't bark orders. You need to be able to inspire those you lead so that they buy the vision, they take it as their own, and okay. they make a stamp exactly on the organization. So I always challenge founders to promote yourself. Promote yourself to chief innovation officer, chief legacy officer, chief strategy officer. And whilst you're being promoted, also promote those that are beneath you, that are um, reporting to you. Mm -hmm. Delegate more responsibilities to them. Improve their capacity so that they can make an impact on your organization. So we can't have this conversation on sustainability without thinking about effective leadership. It's really important. Whether it's within the next generation in the family, if the family members choose to be leaders in the business, okay. or in the business themselves, executives of a business may not necessarily be family members. 
that's also an option we need to start thinking about. Must there always be the first son that becomes the next CEO? Mm -hmm. Might not, the son may not be interested, yeah. may not be well equipped. So um, we need to broaden our horizons on how this can take shape. Mm. When you talk about um, family, uh, family business, that means it's like a together thing, putting it together. So the question of family values would also come into play here. How much of impact would sound family values have on the family business? So much. So I say that multi-generational wealth and multi-generational businesses are, are outcomes, but there's some fundamental inputs. And one of those is strong family values. So let's think about it like this. The values are like the engine of the car. Without the engine, the car won't start, whereas the wealth is the speed at which the car drives. And I believe that at the heart of every business is its values, its experience, its heritage. And a mix of these three things gives it its, what I term as its secret source. Mm -hmm. And it's this secret source that differentiates one business from the other and gives it its cutting edge. We need to reflect who are we as business founders? What do we stand for? Because quite often, our family values as business founders impact on the values of the business. Let's reflect on what those values are. Let's document them so we don't forget the recipe to how to make this secret sauce because I strongly believe that family values play a huge role in the sustainability story. Um, wealth without values are destructive. Mm. Okay, so um, if anybody's watching us now and is thinking about setting up a family business, they do well to get in touch with you to get guidance, right? Yeah. So what would you tell them? Um, firstly, I need to understand what's your why. I think your why is more important than your what. Okay. Because we are human beings, we're not human doings. Um, being an entrepreneur is tough, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll be faced with very difficult situations. Yeah. We don't want an instance where you are um, you're glued to the flash and the pano pano, as we say, being, you know, a being a CEO, mm. you know, mm. with your Ikoyi office, driving your Prado. It's not. The reality of being an entrepreneur is hard work. So we need to understand what's your why. Are you really, really passionate about this? Are you all in? Once we know your why and you're committed, then we can start building frameworks for is your strategy the best strategy to achieve what it is you want to achieve? And we start thinking about your vision, your mission, your, the foundations of the business, um, your objectives and all that. And then we'll start talking more long term, building the pieces to make this thing sustainable. Um, I've come up with a framework, like I said, and in the framework, I've prescribed specific solutions to business founders. And these solutions are determined by the growth and the maturity of their businesses. Quickly. Mm -hmm. One at a time. Just tell us if they wanted to get in touch with you. How would they do that? Facebook. I'm a millennial, so <laughs> <laughs> social media. Look for me on um, facebook.com forward slash Nikkei Anani. Um, I do Facebook Lives twice weekly. I speak on topics, on um, family businesses, and um, engage. So you can DM me on Facebook. That's all. That's all. Okay. No telephone number? Telephone number on here? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, all right. okay. <laughs> okay. My email address okay. yes, na at nikeanani.com. Okay. Nike, Ola Nike Anani, family business practice expert. Thank yeah. you very much for coming to talk to us. Thank about you. This very important topic, albeit one that we don't really pay attention to. Yeah. Thanks for bringing our focus to it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for staying with us. Sunrise will be right back.